So I'm laying the vulture a little bit off center. Usually you don't want to put down the center of stuff because um, it, it's perspectively and visually more pleasing to off center it a little bit. So I'm gonna put it off center to the right. And then I'm gonna start in the roof. You don't have to be uh, as accurate in the drawing with the perspective because we can correct that with okay. just some beams under here. Like this. And I'll center that beam a little bit from this point right here. And then laying the bird. I think he was trying to dry himself off. So with the picture, I'm going to lay in his wing. And clouds had to be a blue, sunny sky, warm day. It's pretty warm in Houston, Texas right now. So I will, as we go, maybe add some clouds to center the piece more. Um, keep your perspective on the bird. This is where the main. So usually with my, um, what I do is wet the background a little bit with some water that's sort of already dirty from maybe other painting days or whatnot, and I just let it flow onto the canvas. As you can tell, uh, makes it easier when you put in your sky. The plant don't don't be shy at the water because we're gonna work thin to thick. With the painting, you get textured. The best way to do texture on a painting is start out thin um, and then build it up with thicker layers. But if you were me, I'd just get go right at with really heavy paint. Um, but this is more of a, an impressionistic painting technique. So, what I'm going to do is lay out some blue. I'm using acrylic artist lofts from Michaels. And I'm going to throw out some phthalo blue onto my um, palette. A little bit of yellow, trying to get a nice color to it. And then the yellow I'm using is cadmium yellow light, if I'm not mistaken. Let me double check for you. Um, actually, it's yellow medium, sorry. So you get that color. That would be a nice night color, but we're going to turn it into a day scene. Um, I'm going to take a little more yellow and the more white you have light in the sky color. And this would be like a number five tone we're going to make to begin with. Tints and tones are one to five or ten, six to ten are tones. Maybe like 2, 3 p.m. I'm guessing. A nice, maybe some little bit of cloudy day. So there you got a nice number five and the darkest part up in the corners. Sorry, I'm left-handed, kind of messes up your view a little bit once in a while. But with a wet background, it will make it more pliable to paint. And it tones the canvas is what that means there, where you tone it with a specific light pigment. You know, you can tone your canvas yellow. Um, you can tone your canvas orange, purple. Kind of red, purple's yellow, so if you have that color scheme, it would be great too. Um, so, so I laid in the basic color of the sky. What I do now is called Ella Prima, where you just paint wet into wet. So I'm literally going to take white paint with a little bit of the blue mixture to lighten up certain areas to add atmospheric perspective. So. With that, you're going from dark, lighter, 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 lighter. Like, um, so for instance, I'm just gonna draw a straight line here. I'll blend it in as I go. So maybe that's where it will start to change. Crack the top of the paint, which is, I mean, a lot of artists have done that. So this is where you stop on the right side with the blue or clouds. Maybe it's going to 
get overcast later in the day more. But a suggestion of a few clouds is a nice little trick that will help drag your eye throughout the painting. So as you're on top of the canvas, they will be bigger. As they get closer to the horizon line, they get thinner, lighter, and closer together, and more blurred. So I'm thinking I'll put a cloud here. And they're not just straight lines. But you want to like twist them, turn them. Um, like I said, as you get closer to you, they're going to get like darker. And warmer. Because as it goes back, it's cooler. Or you can reverse it. Cool in front, warm in back. Like an inch. And I'm going to soften, uh, gently soften the clouds into the background. And so what happens is the further away from the top to the horizon line, for instance, it becomes more out of focus, blurry, blended into the background compared to what's up on top. Or the darkest tone you could get out of it. Blood. Sorry. So, like this. So, see what happens if you don't have enough. Um, so, how it scumbles like that and breaks up the back. shy with paint. A lot of people have a tendency to not use enough paint in their paintings. And I was always taught just don't be shy of using paint. I mean there was times I was like just mixing palettes until I learned how to mix the color properly where you literally took oil paint and wasted it at the end of the day. You mixed paint on palettes that were like four foot long and then what happens is you throw the paint away or you hopefully use it on a different day because you're there for hours mixing paint because out of these three colors and white and um, violet, you can make hundreds of colors, neutralize them, whatever you need to do. So like high-end, accurate color schemes of your, what you're seeing in reality. Sometimes you have to learn how to alter it on your own as an illusion. So what I'm doing is more blue into the back. This will help push the dark back. I like. I think if I'm not mistaken, um, this makes it right. I'm gonna start with this color of it. Then if I need to add highlights, I take some of the yellow, like middle tones, to like a three instead of what the one and two. I need to tape it or anything. I'm just going for very specific straight lines. It's good to have some um, of your character into that. So I'm laying in this. If I need, I would clean up get the tip here. going red in the wet to lay in the frame that holds up the roof. So if it seems too dark at first, what you do is just keep the loaded brush and just work it all the way to the end. And you'll see the difference of the values that happens with it. So side of the brush, straight down you see how it creates all these values as it's going. I'm trying to, you can't really tell in the photo all the different beams, so, so here's a beam. Here's a cross beam. There we go. And we always add highlights as we go, because like, for instance, closer to here, it's going to be darker in the shadow, as it comes down, you might want to like, like this, hit it with a little bit of the red, yellow, blue, almost like yellow ochre. There we go. 
I use my phone camera, so you're, you're only getting so much of what you really see. And I'll put a beam down here. Put a beam in front of it. Then you'll also want to have, as it's going back now, it's going to get cooler and have some beams like happening back there. So this is warmer beams. Yeah, so the background. And that's not going to be as in focus. It's going to like be behind everything else. I'm working to get that in there. Uh, you put some beams back here, maybe. Lose it into the background. You don't have to be perfect. I'm not leaving in a straight line anywhere because you kind of figure his feathers are going to be doing some work too as he's drying off. And we'll lay in some feathers. And believe it or not, as the swing is going further away, it's going to be bluer a little bit. And maybe a little bit more out of focus because it's a further feather. And a good way to keep your canvas activated is with a spray bottle sometimes. They have mediums to keep the paint from drying too quickly. And I'm cleaning up any edges I have at first. With that, you know, what you want to not do is bring it all the way up to here to copy it. So maybe break it up a little bit. It's okay if the brown mixes with it a tad. Clean it up if you have to, the paint. I try not to use even amount of trees when you do paintings or like right in four birds, seven, compa seven compared to eight. It just helps visually make the painting more pleasing to the eye. Yeah. What I'll do is add a little dark, but not dark as this. Just uh, and, and soften it a little bit. Depends on how far you go back. So that will be softer than the, this part. So maybe add a little more happening here. A little more blue into it. Just to change up the shape. Break it up a little bit. Helps make it more realistic or impressionistic, believable. It helps. Maybe over here, put a little more dark. It's not perfect, but it's starting to come up together. So now what we're going to work on is the bird. So if I'm not mistaken of his wings, then it gets really dark. So load your brush with a yellowish light. Since it's so dark, it will pop off of it easily. So it's yellow and a little bit of white. So you're not like using white out tube or black out tube. You always mix it with something if you can. Sometimes you don't. Break the rules. Gentle, quick, get it in. There's the tips. And then over on this side. Since it's wet and wet, you have to maybe hit it more than once. Warm it up a little bit. His head, it's gonna be on the white side, it's a white face. You can soften it a little bit into here, your finger if you want, or use a brush. Then, coming along, now let's work on his eye a little bit. So, I'm gonna create the dark again. I'm just going to lay it in. 
what we'll do is add a highlight to the eye. Break up the feathers a little bit. So you can see details without seeing details. So you can create details without making a very detailed attempt of making details and suggestions. These suggestions help bring your eye to seeing things um, that make it seem realistic. Soften it with my hand, bust out. Yeah, and we can always hit back and clean them up more if you like. So I will do with the yellow, more yellow than brown. Just get different values of the roof. See, and test it out before you go with full force with it too. It's always good to do. Test out the color you're using. So I'm just trying to get a color I like. This looks pretty cool. I'm gonna test it out like right here. Too dark, see what happens if it kind of flattens. And I'm just not gonna get to the color you like. Offhand, off to begin with. What you can do is add a tad of white. This is where that would come in handy for your highest highlights of the painting. Highest highlights where you can add a little white to it if you would like. But make sure don't make it um, where it's like a dull grayed down, has no um, warmth to it or anything. So what I'm gonna do is try to get the color I like. So give the dimension of the board. Even in here you have decide where the light's coming from. So I'm thinking maybe something's coming from here, maybe to offset the light from here. So, and be gentle. And hold your breath if you have to for a second, just to get the lines as straight as you like. So that color I used for that part of the darks. So what I would like to do, finish this off right here, is to, actually what I would like to do, first, is take some of this color of the brown that was made, maybe just keep it all like mixed together like this. And there are gonna be branches in here, it's not just a blob of paint. So break them up, don't make them one solid line or anything. You know, it could be like the get a printer brush for this one actually. That brush was too angled for me. We're gonna say a trunk loops here. It could be like that. Doing some kind of interesting stuff like that. Break it up a little bit, it comes over here. There's other bran branches happening. So when you have the thick paint, it kind of makes it a little more challenging at times. But just hit it again. So hit it twice. Sometimes you have to hit it more than once when you have texture on a painting. And then you can go with a smaller brush. Get some more textures in here. Step back for a second. Take a look at your painting. And I think what I need right now is just take yellow by itself. And you want to change the direction of your brush. This is, like for instance, it's going in one direction, you bring it down in a different direction, that's hatching and cross hatching of even paint. Drawings do a lot of that. And just work it in there. Some highlights, some shadows. And I'm having it aim down like this. That creates some nice textures and it'll change the, the brush strokes a little bit. Clean up right now. So I made an error. Got some of the um, tree into the brown that neutralizes it. Clean that up a little bit. It's fine, it's easy to fix.
pressure into him because he's they'll make him pop even more and just make it just lay it in and leave it alone lay it in, don't over mix it because that happens quite a bit in paintings clean them up a little bit and find the white take it to the tip of his nose I mean beak whatever you want to call it clean it up just rubbing on my shirt now things that hit within that we call it a day on this guy make sure I get a little more fluffiness because he just came out of the shower or puddle of water or whatever that was maybe got a little red to it maybe you got some happening um, like he had dinner lunch make the story up make it sound cool And I'm thinking we could work on the sky if we wanted. Another thing you could do to continue this is add more highlights to this side, which I'll do right now. A little yellow and white mixed together with the dirty brush. Helps. And don't make a straight line. Just break it up a little bit. Bring it down a little bit. I think that's a good painting for the first one. Um, this is the vulture bathing 